في البداية اسمحوا لي أن أنوه أن ندوتنا وفعاليتنا لهذا اليوم هي في بث حي ومباشر عبر أثير إذاعة طلال أبو غزالة للثقافة والأعمال على تردد 102.7 سيدي سعادة العين الدكتور طلال أبو غزالة راعي هذا الحفل أصحاب المعالي والعطوفة والسعادة سيدي سعادة السفير الإيطالي ممثلي البعثات الدولية والسفارات والمنظمات في الأردن السيدات والسادة أيها الحضور الكريم أهلا وسهلا بكم جميعا وشكرا لكم تلبيتكم دعوتنا لكم اليوم في ملتقى طلال أبو غزالة المعرفي هذا الملتقى الذي شكل دوما مكانا للقاء والالتقاء بحيث يوفر منصة سقفها السماء بطموحاتها وأهدافها وأفكارها منصة لكل من يعمل بجد لينطلق منها لما فيه خدمة للمجتمع والوطن ونحو عالم أفضل ولأن إيماننا كان دوما بأن الشباب هم المحرك الرئيسي للتنمية والازدهار والريادة والإبداع وبجهود الشباب يتحقق المستحيل ويتحقق بذلك رفاه المجتمع حتى في أحلك الظروف وفي الحروب وفي مناطق النزاع لذلك نستضيف اليوم منظمة سبارك الدولية التي تدعم الريادة والرياديين وبالأخص الشباب الذي يعاني في مناطق النزاع حول العالم وذلك بتمكينه وتوفير فرص التعلم والتدريب لتأهيلهم لسوق العمل وتأسيس أعمالهم وشركاتهم ليقودوا بدورهم مجتمعاتهم نحو الاستقرار والازدهار إن أفضل من يتحدث ويعرفنا أكثر عن منظمة سبارك الدولية وأهدافها ونشاطاتها حول العالم الأستاذة جودث فولبرت وهي ممثل منظمة سبارك الدولية في الأردن حيث تقول أن الحياة هي مثل قيادة الدراجة الهوائية لتحافظ على توازنك يجب أن تستمر بالحركة وأن تتقدم جودث Please join us, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Masai um, Khe. Good afternoon, um, Your Excellency. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, I will speak in English because my Arabic is not good enough, uh, enough to do this in Arabic. Um, thank you very much. I would like to thank everyone but especially you for hosting this event, and um, especially also Mr. Fadi Daoud for the cooperation, because it has been very, very pleasant. Um, I will say a bit more about Spark and who we are as an organization. Um, actually, it started this year 25 years ago. Two students from the Netherlands, from Amsterdam, went to uh, Serbia after the war there, and their students, so they got in touch with other students. What they found was that it was there very difficult for people of their age to get a job. And they thought, okay, I'm not from here, I'm from the Netherlands, can I do anything? So they started thinking, they couldn't really do anything, they didn't know what was going on there, but they wanted to do something. So what they did, they found that in the Netherlands there were entrepreneurship trainings. So they thought, if I go there, and we train people how to create their own business, they can create their own jobs. And that is what we still do as Spark. We're now active in 17 regions, a lot of focus on the MENA region. Um, we have our office in Jordan, of course, but also in Ramallah we have an office. Um, we have an office in Turkey, 17 different offices. And in all those offices, we focus on those three main elements, youth, entrepreneurship, and conflicts. Um, in Jordan, we um, obviously work with this as well. We started here working in 2015 when um, 
we had the opportunity by the Netherlands Ministry of Foreign Affairs to offer scholarships to both Syrian youth and Jordanian youth. If you see our volunteers in the back, we were very lucky to have them here. They are actually our uh, students. So we started in 2015 and in 2016 the office here was, um, was started. And we have several different activities here. We, um, besides the scholarships, we work on internships, where uh, we work with the Jordan Chamber of Industry. The first 252 interns have finished their internship, and out of those people, already 50 have found a job where the person, the business they were working at, offered them a contract. And we're counting, because we're still continuing. We work with competence management uh, consultancy, for example, to offer business development support services. Um, that's how we work with the labor market. We also work with more with individuals where, for example, we do the same thing as 25 years ago um, with Arabian business consultants for development. Uh, we give uh, startup training so people can create their own jobs and create their own business. We work with universities to uh, uh, develop entrepreneurship modules because we have 25 years of knowledge on this topic, so why not work with people um, that the entrepreneurship culture is more spread in Jordan. And this lecture is part of the conflict-sensitive business skills training, where we would like to prepare people, Jordanians, Syrians, to take the lead into um, rebuilding Syria whenever that will be possible. And we want to inspire people by showcasing individuals like Mr. Momand, who have done this before. So he will tell his story later as well. And actually, that's also why I'm very happy to be at this place, because you're a perfect example of this yourself. Um, if you want to know more about Spark, Spark activities, please get in, uh, leave your details at the, the volunteers back there, or um, connect with us on Facebook, uh, or, if you want to know more directly from us now, we all wear a badge. Um, so at the networking event, get in touch with myself or one of my colleagues. Thank you very much. I'll switch back to Arabic now. For a little time. عندما نتحدث عن اللجوء والنزوح وعندما نتحدث عن المعاناة والتحدي وعندما نتحدث عن تحويل النقمة إلى نعمة وتحويل الصعاب إلى نجاحات تفوق حدود العالم لن أبعد كثيرا ولماذا نبعد؟ فنحن نعيش يوميا قصة حية شملت في صفحات حياتها العديد من العبر والقصص الملهمة التي حولت البطانية إلى معطف وكانت تسعى إلى قطف البرتقالة الأعلى في الشجرة لن يكون الحديث بنفس المتعة والتشويق والإلهام إذا لم نستمع لها مباشرة من صاحب هذه القصة لذلك رحبوا معي بسعادة العين الدكتور طلال أبو غزالة مؤسس ورئيس مجموعة طلال أبو غزالة الدولية التي فاقت مكاتبها حدود العالم Thank you very much uh, Excellences especially my great friend Jervan Gerdi a great ambassador of Italy we're very proud to have you here uh, my distinguished colleagues who are members of uh, the board of this forum I am grateful to you for, for joining us this evening. And uh, I appreciate uh, what you're doing, Judith. It's, it's a great initiative, and I need you badly, because I'll tell you later why. Uh, Fadi, I'm very proud of you as a leading member of, the, of this forum and the chairman of the Youth uh, Committee, which is one of our most active committees in this uh, forum. You've, uh, you've done a lot in promoting uh, youth leadership in this country. And this is one example. 
Uh, Mumad, we're delighted that you came over from Afghanistan. Hmm? Is it Afghanistan? Yes, uh, you don't, you don't uh, understand English, you speak English, of course. Uh, we, we are very proud that we have an office in Kabul, the only international company that has an office in Kabul since 20 years. And we have been uh, doing a lot of services to the government and to the banking community and the community at large. We are very proud that we, are, we have this distinct honor of uh, being present uh, in Afghanistan, a great country, great people. We do not judge people by, by conflict and by times of uh, sad uh, events. We judge by history and geography. By history and geography, Afghan is a great country. Um, I want to say a few words, some of what I say, you probably heard it before. But I'll, I'll say it anyway. We, I am now working on a serious plan for exactly what you're doing, Judith, for Syria. And I'm not talking about a minor project. I am preparing for a major project for helping Syrians who are outside as refugees and who are displaced inside Syria, both. We have, we have, and we are very grateful to the European Union. We have a project to teach Syrians in Zaatari camp to acquire academic degrees online while in the camp from recognized universities worldwide. And we are now talking to the European Union about making this process available also inside Syria for the displaced, the millions of displaced. This is only part of what we're doing, but we are very proud uh, that we are doing that. I will be calling on you very soon on how we can utilize the great uh, ideals and uh, services of SPARC in Syria. And that would be very, because the Syrians are also a great nation. We know, I must, I must tell you, and maybe many of us do not know, that the highest literacy, internet literacy, if I want to count 10 countries with the highest internet literacy in the world, Syrian refugees would be among them. It's very impressive that those people who are living in, uh, in camps with the most minimum of uh, services and uh, amenities of life that uh, they are. And this, by the way, the International Telecommunication Union, which is the ICT arm, IT arm of the United Nations, is starting to rank nations as of last year, not by developed and developing, but by the number of digital citizens in each country. And if I want to count the digital citizens in each country, as a proud Palestinian and as a proud Syrian, I can say that the Palestinians and the Syrians both rank on top of this list of digital citizens, which means children who since their birth drink milk with IT. While they have the bottle, they snatch the mobile or whatever from their mothers and start playing with it. This is the digital citizen, not like me. Well, of course, I had my first uh, computer course in 1965, before all of you were born, and that is why I happened to, to be selected by Kofi Annan to be the chairman in 2001 of the United Nations ICT task force which formulated the strategies for the world 
in all what the tools and digits and programs that you are using now. But these Palestinians, because of their hardship, and Fadi mentioned something that the, the, what I call the blessing of suffering. Because these refugees cannot go to movies, they have no movie house, they have no club, no gym, they don't have girlfriend to take out, they don't have boyfriends to take out, they only have one thing to do, that's the internet connectivity. That's their lifeline. So they excel at it. And excel, I can assure you, they, they have. And I am very proud that I belong to the generation of refugees. I was a refugee, and I never felt sad. I never felt unfairly treated. I never felt depressed. I always felt, I always felt proud. And I, my pride came out of an ambition that one day I can prove to the world that I'm no less than my enemy. And therefore, my mission in life was to be better than my enemy. And therefore, I was full of ambition, full of happiness, and full of drive. And I never accepted to accept the fact that I've been thrown out. I'm thrown out into the world. And I'm very lucky that I found a country, Jordan, who gave me another home, another land, another nationality, in addition to mine as a Palestinian. I'm a Palestinian Jordanian. And I'm very proud so that this country has given me the platform from which to be everywhere in the world and to build a firm, a group of firms, that is a global leader. I'm not talking about being the largest or leading company in, in a country or in a region. We are number one worldwide in many of our services, including intellectual property protection, we are by, where we are by far the largest and the most important country in the world. We develop it, we develop the uh, intellectual property system in Afghanistan for the government. We computerized it for the government. We are on the committee that advised China on how to implement intellectual property rights, etc. And this came out, all came out out of nothing. So I want to, I want to tell you that I very much believe in what you're doing. I am a product of uh, after-conflict countries, uh, regions, and I believe that it's a blessing to be a refugee, it's a blessing to be a suffering person, because how wonderful it is to have to, have to acquire everything. If you have nothing, you are very lucky, because you have so much to acquire. If you have everything, it's boring. There is nothing you need. It's very boring, but it's nice. It's nice when there is a... When honor was started, and it had the first, the first scholarship for a university student in 1956. And I was a refugee in Lebanon at that time. And the prize said that this will be given a full scholarship at the American University of Beirut for the refugee who is the top student in Lebanon. Top student in Lebanon. I had to be the top student in Lebanon. This is a suffering. This is a privilege. I was lucky that I was forced to be the top student and to earn the scholarship. And so was my life. Question of need to succeed the need to excel. And therefore, I believe in what you're doing. I believe that this part of the world is destined again to leave the world. I'm not saying to, that we will need to catch up with the world uh, developed countries. No, we don't want to catch up with them. We have to remember that for, for 500 years, five centuries, we led the entire world. 
And as De Gaulle taught me, President De Gaulle used to say, to judge the future, you need to study history and geography. He always had history books on his desk and maps on the walls. And he said, if you want to predict the future of any country, of any nation, look at their history and at their geography. By history and by geography, we have to have a leading place in the world, and we will. And if anybody says that we are in, in a region which is ruined, hopeless, I'll tell him, can you answer a simple question for a simple mind? If there is nothing and no future in this region, why is every country in the world fighting to have a place here? Just tell me, explain to me. And I'm not talking about America, China, Russia, Germany, Italy. I'm talking even about the small countries of the world. Every country wants to have its, its, uh, its foot in this region. If there is no future in this region, why? Why fight and spend and invest? I believe in the great future of this region. And I believe that destruction is a privilege so that we can rebuild in a better way. And when I talk to the, Jordan, to the Syrian authorities and they say we want to reconstruct, I said no. We don't want al-i'mar. al-mustadam We don't want just to be back where we were. We want to build the future. That is what should be our aim, not to see what was there. And we have a lot to learn from countries and regions which were destroyed. Where was music? Munich? Where was Japan? Where was many of the countries in the world that were destroyed completely? Cities were destroyed. And out of that, in Europe and in the rest of the world, emerged the great nations. Out of this destruction will emerge the great countries of this region again. And we will be again a source of inspiration, leadership, and greatness for the rest of the world. As Fadi said, there is no limit or ceiling to our ambition. I don't want to accept anybody to say, well, let us see how we can catch up or follow. No, we want to lead. I always believed in the advantage of the first mover. We want to be first movers in everything. And it doesn't matter if I'm small. I learned from a great man, Nelson Rockefeller, who was the vice president of the United States of America. I met him when I was very young. I'm talking about in the 70s. He wanted to meet me. And when the ambassador called me and he said, no, Rockefeller wants to meet you, I said, it must be a mistake. This story is in my book, which is uh, titled uh, Blessed Stories from a Life Blessed by Suffering. He said, anyway, I told the ambassador, there must be a mistake. Nelson Rockefeller wants to meet me. I can't believe that he ever heard of my name. I was just starting my career. He said, you know, we don't make mistakes in, in, in information. So I went to see him. He said, you know why I want to see you? I said, no. He said, I was meeting with Anwar Sadat. And we have a great project. I don't want to get into the details of the great project. And I want you to be my partner. So I laughed. He said, why are you laughing? I said, I never heard of a partnership between the elephant and the mosquito. <laughs> he said, you are the mosquito. Because the elephant, obviously, because is the symbol of his party. He said, so you are the mosquito? I said, yes. He said, young man, let me tell you something. Never underestimate the power of the small. Put the elephant and the mosquito in a closed room. Who will win the battle? The mosquito will make life miserable for the elephant, and the elephant will be helpless. He cannot even touch him. He, he, she, the mosquito will take him from his nose, from his ear, from his back, and all he can do is frustrate. Small is, is important. So never underestimate, and I learned from that lesson, 
I am small, yes. But even if as small as I am, I can be, as some great philosophers say, always little is always more. So I finally, anyway, finally I said, I don't want to get into this project because I don't think it will work. And I explained why. He didn't agree with me. So he said, uh, in 50 years, you and I will sit, and in 30 years, I think he said, in 30 years, it's in my book, in 30 years, we, you and I will sit, but none of these young men who are here will be around because they would have passed away. Your father lived, my father lived 107. Of course, he has access to my, to my file through the CIA. And his father lived 97. He said, you and I will live it. I said, please don't say that. We believe that our death is, has no, no relevance to anything. It's decided before we are born and nobody can judge it. He said, no, 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 nonsense. This is a genetic fact. It so happens that I left him that after lunch and he passed away during the night. Again, I learned a lesson. Never, never feel secure, it's not sure, sure of anything except what you do and not what you expect to happen to you. And I have learned that I am to depend only on what I do today. And when I sleep every night, I expect not to wake up the next day. I say, great, I had a beautiful day, a beautiful life so far. And when I wake up in the morning, I'm so happy that God has given me one extra day. It's great happiness. And I'm at my best the moment I open my eyes because I feel the blessing of a new day. Life is good. Even the worst part of it. I am 80 years old. Perhaps one of the reasons is because I suffered. Because I had to walk four hours every day to go to the nearest school as a refugee. Four hours every day to walk. How wonderful. What great exercise. It's not a hardship, it's a blessing. And I can tell you hundred stories of that kind, which we don't have time for. But all I want to say is, I'm a great believer in what Spark is doing. And I'm going to count on you on a, 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 a major and, and, and large project uh, for Syria. That is my concern now. One of my major concerns now is how to build Syria of the future. Not to rebuild Syria. To build the future Syria. And in that, one of the things, in fact, I talked to the Minister of Finance and he asked me, in Syria, the Minister of Finance, uh, he, told, he asked me about a project like this. I didn't know by, at that time of this project. He said, how can we exactly help doing business in post-conflict countries? How? So we will need uh, this project. That's why I'm grateful that I'm with you here tonight. I thank you very much. I apologize for speaking so long. But uh, it's, 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 it, I am I'm a very passionate person. And when I talk about things, I, I talk about things with love. I don't, I'm not a scientist. I'm not an engineer. I am a lover. I talk about things with love. Whatever I do, I do it with love. Thank you very much. As much as I always listen to you, Your Excellency, as many times, each time has a special impact, each occasion has a new wisdom, a new motivation, uh, it has a special taste every, every single time. Thank you and God bless you and wish everybody uh, to be inspired as much as I do personally do uh, get inspired always. To move on now and welcome Mr. Moment, the CEO, the co-founder and the CEO of Mido Dairy Production, a new dairy processing plant 
built with Dutch technology in Kabul, Afghanistan. He is also a member of the Global Shape Shaper Community of the World Economic Forum in Davos. He believes that poverty reduction can be done through entrepreneurship. رحبوا معي بالمؤسس الشريك لشركة الألبان ميدو في أفغانستان كابل السيد مماند شركة ميدو هي مصنع للألبان بتكنولوجيا هولندية في كابل السيد ميدو السيد مماند هو أيضا عضو في المجتمع في العالمي ضمن المنتدى الاقتصادي العالمي World Economic Forum في دافوس We are more than happy and excited to welcome you and to listen to your own success story, Mr. Moment. Please, the floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you, sir, for having me here. Thank you, Spark, for inviting me here. Um, yeah, I was, I was here to inspire people to talk about my success, and I heard your story. I just, I'm just still processing everything, so it will take me a few minutes to start. Um, yeah, I think there, there are a lot of things that I can relate to what you said. I, um, when I was 13 years old, we moved as a refugee from Kabul during the civil war to Holland. So um, I've been raised and studied in, in, in Holland. And um, my, I think the presentation, if there's yeah. um, So um, I, was, I was a student. Uh, so um, I was a student um, in, in Holland. I was studying investment and finance, and uh, uh, I wanted to work for an investment bank. And um, one day we were with some friends, and we decided to uh, gather some money and build a school for orphan children in Kabul. And um, the money was ready, but no one was going to Kabul, and they asked me if I want to go. And um, yeah, I decided to go and to give the money to the school. And uh, one of the days I went to a shop to buy cheese, because when you live in Holland, you always eat a lot of cheese. So uh, this was a small corner shop, I still remember it, the shop is still in Kabul, and there was an old man sitting there, and um, he, um, he had this French cheese called La Vache Kiri, and um, it was three years expired. So I went to this guy and I said, um, it's three years expired, this and uh, he uh, looked very uh, angry and strange to me and he said either you buy it or you put it back so don't come to me with this and uh, I went to other shop I saw that the quality of the other products were also very bad so uh, I was very surprised I didn't know what the price of a liter of milk in Holland will be but I was surprised and then I go home and I um, thought about it because I was studying finance and investment and um, I researched on my own, out of curiosity, nothing, nothing for business. And um, at a certain point, uh, when I finished my studies, I had a business plan of 80 pages, uh, but no investment and no intention to do something about it, just curiosity. And uh, I presented this to some people who were active in business world in Afghanistan to do something about this. And uh, everyone said, uh, you're crazy, no one will do something about it. And um, so one day, uh, when I was finished with my university degree, I had a job offer and I had this business plan. And I said, I will start and I will do it for one year and then I will ask someone to take it over and I will start as a banker. But it was 2012 and it's now 2017 and I'm still here. So 18 actually, it comes very fast. So um, I started with... Uh, very little, in cooperation with a Dutch company called Van den Heuvel. And gradually the, the team get bigger. Uh, and uh, we started, uh, yeah, this is, this is when I started in 2011, 2012. So I, st I went to Kabul uh, with a bag and, and 5,000 euros in my pocket to find a piece of land which was promised by the government. So when, um, I went there, there was no land. The guy who was in the conference in Holland, he said, yeah, we have the land, but that's already taken, so you know, we don't have land, actually. And um, I had to find a piece of land in, in Afghanistan. It's very difficult because the legal system is, was gone, and there is no registration, and you, you need to have electricity, water, good road connection, and security for a piece of land. So I had to be there for five months. 
and, and find a piece of land. So at the end, I found a piece of land. Um, this is a piece of land, and but I didn't have the money to start. So um, I talked with the owner of the land, and I said, I will pay you in one year, but I want the ownership of the land. So he said, yeah, you can all, never take the land from me, so it's because it's next to my home. So I will give you. So I bought this land for $120,000 and came back. So that's how the journey started, and then you can see that I have more money. 2013, there was a wall, and I'm standing on the construction. This is very unclear, but 2014, you're building already. And 2015, uh, we have the machines, and you also see 2015 when the um, car is coming, bringing the machine in Kabul. Uh, and it's also me standing on the on the roof of the factory. So um, yeah, this is the production. This is when we had one of our process tanks fail, yeah, who, who, uh, was damaged, and I was standing here. And this guy is my driver in your boat. Surprised, we didn't know what to do. So this is also one of the sufferings that you that you see, but you learn from the sufferings. And here you also see that our, so our car, during the Ramadan, where we uh, provide food for the people. So now, this is the, the factory that has been constructed. Uh, it is operational since 2016. We still are not, we cannot use all the capacity, because we require more uh, marketing at the moment. And um, now we, are, we have the largest dairy processing factory in Kabul but we still have to gain the market share. So this is, in, in short, how uh, we did it. So we needed a lot of things to, to realize this. We need um, funding, but you also need knowledge. And um, so we had a, a big combination uh, um, from different parties. Uh, the factory is, uh, was the first one insured by the World Bank in Afghanistan. The Dutch government is involved. Spark was in, uh, involved, involved. So a lot of parties use aid, and uh, these are statistics, um, but I can tell you if you have some questions about this. So our idea is to have, to create a um, dairy value chain in Afghanistan, which is sustainable and can provide job for 1,000 people, including the farmers. Um, so, um, I have also a small commercial of the company, which I can show you, and then we have time maybe for a QA. Hello? Commercial? Yes, this is not a commercial. Yes, this is 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 Most of the people who are living in the world are living in the world. How are you going to go? So then you see the Dutch con connection with the project. Um, so this is in short uh, my, my story of entrepreneurship. And then uh, I would like to hear if you have some, any questions. Um, so that's in short. Yes. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Moment. And we'll open the floor for any discussion, any comments, anything you have in mind. We'll have microphones around for people who'd like to have any questions to Mo. Yes. Uh, thank you for, for, for the presentation. Uh, Compliment. You talked about local ownership. Could you please uh, explain more how did you do that with, uh, I don't know, uh, any people, citizens, maybe? Um, so that's the, the thing that we are working at the moment at. Is, um, so there's mm, a lot of milk imported to the country, but there's also a lot of milk produced in the country. And uh, what we want to do, we want to um, build the infrastructure to collect milk. Uh, we don't want to build a huge farm for ourselves and use the milk, which also happens a lot in a lot of countries. We just want to connect so that the farmers are the owners, so they have um, stable income each month.
from the cow and that then they will invest more in their farms and then the ownership locally increase. Presentation. I have a couple of questions. First of all, was your target uh, was the local uh, market only like for production, the end product was only before the local market? Uh, or were you aiming to get to to increase it to even to cross the border to other countries? That's my first question. Secondly, I would like to know more about the challenges. You mentioned that there are few partners and I'm originally from Syria and we have a lot of, we have some ideas like this, but when it comes to finance when you are still in conflict and crisis, you come up and then the market go weaker and weaker and then by the time you're gonna start you're gonna have plenty of uh, challenges. So if you share uh, some challenges with us, maybe we'll learn more from it. Thank you. Uh, export, yes. Thank you, sir. Um, so, uh, what, what we see, Afghanistan is an importing country, so we import a lot of dairy products there. Uh, if we manage to use the whole capacity of the factory, which will be 14 million liters of production annually, you will only be able to satisfy 30% of the market. So, it will be just for the local market. My aim is also to produce for local. Mm. And uh, secondly, financing is an issue. It's, it, it is, I think, in some cases more difficult to find financing than to avoid security issues. Uh, this, is, uh, this has been also the struggle of, of, of me, but I think what, what we can do nowadays is that you, what Mr. Talal also said, is that we uh, reinvent things, that we do it differently. So now you can do a lot with crowdfunding, you can have a hybrid model of financing, you can use grants, you can use loans, uh, there are a lot of options. So uh, in the past, if you, if you went to people and talked with them, it was just the bank. But now, I think also in Syria, there will be a lot of NGOs active. Um, you can do a lot with, with crowdfunding, with uh, internet, um, finding equity holders. Uh, so you have to be creative and I think that will be something that will make the new economy more stronger because if you are pushed to the boundaries then you will be more creative. And, and the challenges, yes, I can talk the whole day so <laughs> about the challenges what I've seen there. Um, to, to, to just give you an idea about the land. So for the land we, we needed good quality of water because we need very good quality of water to produce very good quality of yogurt. But there was no, uh, yeah, no one will allow you to dig a hole in their land before you buy them. So how do you know the quality of the water? And there is no registration about it. So I had to dig in and ask people and drink a lot of tea with a lot of people. And then someone told me that the Russians had a book about the quality testing of the water in the region. And maybe there will be some information about it. And yes, there was. So there was information about the quality of the water in this region done by the Russians in the 70s, and we used that one to buy this land. So that's, you have to be creative because in, in those situations, uh, you don't have support of the government. Because when I'm starting a company in Holland, I can get 80% of the information online or from the government sources. So then you have to be creative. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Have to wear. Yeah, thank you very much. Allah is so kind to us. For example, the Spark Spark, we talked about a group of organizations that had a relationship with the project. And among them was the Spark. And as we are now with you, do you know what is the role that this organization played in the project? Is it knowledge or business or education? I think Spark will like it. <laughs> yeah. So um, what happened um, is there was a, um, a a law signed by our, the previous president of Afghanistan that all the machines and equipments were free of custom duties on that year because they wanted to build more factories. So our uh, machines came on the board. Uh, in Iran and then later to Kabul, but then they asked us to pay 40% taxes 
on all the equipment that we own. But that was unexpected, so we didn't know what to do. Um, then we had some discussions with a lot of people. The Dutch ambassador uh, at that time, he held a lot. And then we reduced that to 4%. But still, we didn't thought that we would have to pay for the taxes. And so we paid that from our working capital. And so we had no working capital. And then we went to Spark to find some of the other equipment that we wanted to use. So Spark provided us a loan, a commercial loan at that time. So uh, it's not a grant, but it's a loan at a time when a lot of people did not believe in us. So that's the connection. Very first. Very interesting. And uh, uh, I admire personally the motivation, the persistence that you have demonstrated. I'm going to ask a question which is, uh, a bit more common uh, regard, uh, related to electricity because what uh, what I do is I build solar power plants. Uh, I personally believe this is the this is the way to go. Um, <coughs> as we uh, uh, not reconstruct but lead uh, into the future of uh, renewable energy in the future to the present, in fact. So I was wondering how you overcame. Uh, I'm sure you had some challenges with power supply. <laughs> so, uh, what can you tell us about electricity in the grid and, and uh, in the area that you had to establish your business? Yeah. It's a very good question, but only yeah, not a lot of people ask me about the electricity problem, but I can tell you that. So, the first thing is that the government promised us to give us electricity. They, they, because there was the line, so they just have to make the connection. But then, uh, like always, you can count on government that they will break their promise. So um, they said, no, we can't do that. So we had, that was also one of the reasons that we asked for the loan from Spark. So uh, we, I calculated how, because we need around 400 kilowatts of electricity, and I calculated at that time how much solar panels we will need, because we have a big factory place. That would be around two hundred fifty thousand dollar, at least, except storage, because you also need storage if you want to be twenty four hours. And paying for the infrastructure of the electricity would be seventy thousand dollars. And uh, yeah, the solar panel will, uh, situation would be very good for for us, but also yes, it, it fits within our strategy. But we simply didn't have the money, and uh, so we chose for the public grid. Uh, and then we change, when there's electricity, we change the production, so we have a good production manager. But now this uh, electricity is becoming more stable in, in Kabul. But yes, my dream is to, 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 to run it on solar, yes. سمحتونا يعني نأخذ من وقته وتحضر معنا سعادة العين دكتور طلال وزالة أصحاب المعالي ورقوب السعادة السفيرة الإيطالية باسم مرتقى طلال وزالة المعالي في نشكر المؤسسة إسبار أيضا مستر مومد ويلكم تو جوردن هوب يو هاف ا جود ستي هير وير كونكلودينغ بات إف يو دونت مايند يور إكسلنسي تو هاف ذا جروب فوتو ويز يو ويز مستر مومد إسبار ستاف فور فور هيستوري بليز